as we're starting to see more people peti uh, petitioning towards centralized exchange adoption, I wanted to hear your stance on all of that because like there, this, this is where things are destined to start shifting. And, you know, I'm just curious to hear your perspective from somebody who has actually been here for a long, for a long time. It's a good question. Yeah. I think what you're referencing is the initiative to get on like Mexi, for example, uh, that, that's been going on that a lot of, a lot of uh, builders and, and, and bigger people in the community have been supporting and people, you know, have an opinion one way or another on, um, yeah, just to, just to lay it out. I, I think it, it's an interesting question. Um, I think, so, so if you, uh, the way I think about it, again, first principles thinking like what, why, why would that be, why would we need to be on central exchanges? Like what benefit would it be? That kind of thing. So again, I, I even messed up the first time. We don't need to be central exchanges because there's DeFi and that's what we want to do. And it's amazing, all that stuff, right? But like, what is the benefit of being on decentralized exchange? If it's not necessary, what is the benefit to being on one? And I think the, the, the best argument for that would be all the SAT sites are will either list you properly or not in one way or another based on the volume from centralized exchanges. That is, I mean, that is, it seems to be the go-to argument for a reason to do such a thing. So, and then you have this whole thing of, okay, well, you know, why do we got to do it? Like, I know we're the community, but like, shouldn't the founders do it? What about all the sack money? Like, like there's all these like different threads that go on with it too. And I mean, I think, I think at the end of the day, being on centralized exchanges in order to fix some of the metrics for the gatekeepers that we cannot convince in any other way that we've tried to for years, that seems to have some merit. That seems like it would, it would do more good than harm. Mm -hmm. And not just for onboarding, but literally just to fix the stats. Like, like forget about, again, people say, oh, Mexi is not available in the US. You know, what are we doing this for? All that stuff. That's like another thread. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if, the, if, if this will actually work, if it will work, if, it is, it is, if the benefit is we get more eyeballs on the product because it is ranked properly on site. So we have no other control. We can't just ask them to do it. So we've been asking them for years to do it. Like they don't do anything. Right. You have to give them some data source that they're looking for like that. You play that game if you want to be in that ballpark type of thing. So as a, you know, real DeFi is a true DeFi place. It doesn't feel good to have to play certain games. At the same time, the benefit that comes from it, apparently a lot of people believe the benefit is worth it. A lot of people believe getting, getting ranked properly in all these different ways, which again, fingers crossed that actually works and we don't get screwed up in some other way. If that's the play versus, you know, trying to get people to do more centralized stuff versus decentralized, I don't think that's the play. I think that's just, I don't think that'll happen that much. Once they come here, they'll be like, oh, I just need to click on the apps. I need Metamask. I need, like, we can teach them how to do stuff once they get here. We can't teach them how to do anything if they're not here. Mm -hmm. So that's the case I would lay out. I think there's a good case for it. Again, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think there's the benefits and what happens if it doesn't happen. And I guess I would ask you the, the other side of it, then, if you want to put in some notes of like, what, what happens if we don't get centralized exchange listed? Do you think they'll make that big of impact of, of what the pro case is for it? See, this is this is the tricky part because I'm not I don't know the best way to navigate it. Um, like, I, I mean, I came from the Bitcoin days of 2016, where it was like, you know, everything was like really pro decentralization first, like keep everything on chain, be anti government, all of this stuff. And that was really why I love Bitcoin. And so. um it changed so much from that point that, you know, when ETH came onto scene, 2017 happened, things got really blown out of proportion. That was where a lot of stuff kind of like shifted in the market and things changed. And now you look at Bitcoin with the ETF and all of this stuff. And I don't look at that as like a positive thing necessarily, because now it's just becoming more, it's just becoming more aligned with how like the traditional world of finance works. And to me, like, I don't like Bitcoin because it's a, it's a public ledger that everybody can see. So it's like, you know, there's no, like, if like the government knew my password, or like knew my address, they would be able to see everything I ever did. So for those reasons, I don't really like it as much. And I would have always kind of petitioned towards being more like having your own privacy and like being, totally on chain because like the whole point of like getting away from the governments and getting away from corporations and all of this stuff was like through decentralization. So it's like, you know, I come from a crypto community way back when, when like the ideals were a little bit different, the way that people like looked at things were a little different. And most people didn't get into crypto until like after that point. And so because of that, most people sh like have a different perspective than I do around this stuff. 
because like I, I came to Pulse Chain because it was kind of like the last frontier when it came to like true DeFi. I was like, man, all this stuff is bought out by VCs. All this stuff is, you know, like controlled by these people. This isn't even decentralized. This is, you know, this and that, all of that crap. And so it got to the point where I was like, man, this is this is kind of like the last frontier over here. And the community reminded me of the original Bitcoin community. And so I've I've been like against the centralized exchange listings. However, I understand your perspective and I understand why everybody wants them. And I do see like the the need for it. Like I, I'm not 100 percent even against the idea. It's just that I love the core ideals of blockchain and I love the core ideals of like this community is what they are right now. And I know that it's set to change a lot because that's what happens to all of them. But I just I, I, I ride that fine line of like, how can we keep the ideals while like bringing in this adoption so that I don't know the best way to go about doing that. But I think it's a really important conversation to talk about because it's really why I came over to Pulse Chain in the first place. So like we're kind of seeing like the 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 beginning stages of like where things are going to start shifting and if we're not careful and if we don't like have open conversations about things like it could shift in a way that we don't actually want it to however if we have these conversations it can also you know be a very positive thing you know keep pulse x off of centralized exchanges so it actually works and you know we can put pulse and stuff over there but maybe even hacks but at the end of the day like i think that the big thing is like you know it we we things on chain should stay like true DeFi is on chain so the more that you're tapping into some of these places the less that you're staying like you're the more that you're aligning with like the the traditional world and then the less that you're sticking with those true like decentralized mm -hmm. morals i guess you should say so like you know yeah. it's a conversation that we can have it's just like how do we actually navigate it i don't know I mean, for me personally, just thinking about I, like do, does a centralized exchange listing, whether it's Mexi or whether it's Binance or like any any exchange, does that weaken the value prop of Pulse Chain and being able to hold your own keys and and uh, use you know DeFi apps and stuff like that? To me, I mean, I, I don't. For me personally, it doesn't change anything. Like, but it's like okay, if I think of me personally versus everyone else out there, will it's like I guess the question is, will they be? tempted to use more centralized products or will they get confused about the DeFi revolution that we're spearheading here hmm. by, by having it listed? I, I don't know. I don't know if there's a lot of evidence in that direction either. So I think the community is trying to decide how much, how much, how much do we do? How much do we support centralized platforms, for example, for the ROI they give us came like, should we do it a little bit only for onboarding? And then hopefully once they get onboarded, they'll be like, okay, welcome to the world of DeFi. You don't need that at central exchange anymore, only for buying it or something, or if you want to do that. But like everything else, once you once you get in your own wallet and figure this stuff out, I mean, that's all you need from there. If yeah. I, I suspect if that ends up being the conclusion, if we look back, if it, if it happens and and we look back and say, you know, oh, it was that obvious, like I wouldn't be surprised if that's if, if that's a result. Yeah. Well, I, I honestly see the value with like listing pulse um on centralized exchanges um because there's really like n nothing more to it i mean aside from being able to like run a node i guess and do that type of stuff see that's the thing is like if, if you're part if you're actually going to participate in the network like you're going to bridge like you're going to go on chain and you're going to do things that way um however if you're not like you would rather just stick to the centralized exchange and buy it that way and have your exposure and you know take your profits whenever you're going to so yeah i do see i do see the value of that as long as like for me it's like as long as you're just keeping it like pulse chain and like having a small amount of that supply actually existing on centralized sources sources to me that's where you know the best thing possible can take place because then you can tap into it but then you can also, you know, keep things true DeFi at the same time. So when I'm looking at things, I think that as long as we just be are aware of that and don't get tr too like gung ho with like, oh, Pulse X needs to be here, this needs to be here, because you know the the there's certain functions that just don't necessarily work if it's the exchange selling like trading the tokens to their own customers, like mm. the buy burn and things like that. Right. So there's certain things that just don't really don't actually work like in DeFi unless it is on chain. So that's my only thing is like, as long as we're just all aware about those things, like I don't really have that much of an issue with like a pulse listing. Cause I do see the need for bringing liquidity on chain. 
And there has to be certain ways to do that. Cause as it stands right now, like, you know, there's still not like the greatest on ramps, like, you know, ultimately like we are working on some stuff right now to help fix a lot of that, uh, fix a lot of those issues with like bridging funds over here. Cause we, like, I want to focus more on like, you know, I'm not going to try and petition towards centralized exchange adoption. I'm going to petition towards building a decentralized alternative. That to me is just more along the lines with like where I resonate with. So it's like, you know, everybody's to each their own. Everybody has their own place in the ecosystem. Like if you're, you know, an influencer, if you're a builder, if you're this or that, it doesn't really matter. Everybody has their own place. And it's like, for me, I'm in a unique position where I can pretty much like build alternatives that like could actually like help keep things real DeFi, but then still bring liquidity from other places. And that to me is where I have value and I can like really, you know, implement that in the pulse chain. So that's what I'm doing. Somebody else might have centralized exchange connections where they could easily get things listed. And if that's the case, you know, having a pulse listing isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. It's just that, you know, there needs to be people that are going out there and actually bringing like at the end of the day, it's up to the community, whether money comes on or whether it doesn't. And it's the people that are willing to take the initiative to go out and make it happen that are going to be the ones that make it happen. So I just think that that's the yeah. biggest thing is just be one of the people that do something. I would, I would think, uh, I suspect that having a centralized exchange listing, whether it's, it's with Mexi or any other place, I suspect more people, it would bring more people into DeFi than the other way around. I don't think it would push more people towards exchanges. I think it would bring more people from exchanges to DeFi if, you know, if that was the, that was the trade-off we're making. 